Are you starting to connect the dots yet? That's the question we need to be answering. The media is telling all of us that the death toll will remain a mystery for some time now. It's been three weeks since the Maui Fire Massacre, and we're all still left with the same questions. Where are the missing children? What happened to the kids? How many of them perished? Now we're hearing reports that over 2,000 children right now are unaccounted for in Lahaina Public Schools two weeks following the fire, and this is according to the Hawaii State Department of Education. This is not according to a TikToker. This is not according to Twitter. This is according to the Hawaii State Department of Education, who is documenting who's showing up in school and who is it. So for anybody out there that tries to snoop, so will come out here and they'll try to say, well, we're fact-checking this with our BS meter, and we're going to just automatically deflect on any stories about it, well, then maybe you should turn to the people you look up to the most, which is the government, who are even admitting in Hawaii that over 2,000 children have not shown up yet to school. Now, we all obviously have heard reports from so many people in Maui, so much so that even local media outlets have picked up on the story, claiming that the numbers that they're giving in regards to the amount of people missing is nowhere near. In fact, the number seems to be edging closer to the amount of people that we lost on the 11th of September. Yet you don't hear this pumped and pushed as a national tragedy. Why? Well, too many people were too suspicious of what they saw with their own eyes. 2,000 children are missing with no answers yet, and they keep trying to shrink that number down and minimize it without any justification. Mainstream media is not showing you the actual terror and tragedy the Lahaina Maui Hawaii fire victims went through. It's, it's really bad out here. It's really bad. People are finding whole families in cars that are just charcoal and fried. Um, my best friend, Michelle, her friend, her brother's uh, family just in the car. They find the car and they find mom and dad in the front seat and the three kids in the back. The other bad thing is that school was out that day that the fire raged through Lahaina. So parents were at work and all the kids were at home. So there's massive amounts of children who perished? As Hurricane Adalia arrived in Florida, we saw residents being told to hurry up, fill up their gas tanks before it arrives. Then they alerted everyone that the gas was contaminated with diesel fuel. Diesel fuel in a regular engine means those vehicle engines are suddenly going to die as the people try to escape and flee the hurricanes. In Maui, no water, no power, no sirens. It's just weird. It doesn't make sense. Then now, British Columbia, same thing, not letting them go in, not letting them go out, not letting people volunteer to help. They also don't have water. It's a mess. And now, now we have Florida. An accident? So they tell them to go get gas to prepare for this hurricane so they can get out of there. They go get this gas and it's all diesel. And everybody wants to pretend like it's a coincidence. It's, it's not. Only Florida, the areas where they need to be evacuated. Now those people broken down on the highways. It's just a coincidence, right? Just a coincidence. Come on. Please, seriously, just look at it yourself. It seems we have to look out for ourselves as the battle is between good and evil at this point. What are we to do? What have we become but a nation of destructive behavior? This is now a war, a war against all of us. Do you think we're the bad one? guys? Just honest question. I think I've been there thinking are a, lot a lot of about bad guys. this lately. I think there are a lot of bad people in our government. If, I don't if think... you look at this from a, you know, whatever, a 60,000 foot view, you look at the world and you look at all the shit that the U.S. has intervened in. And now, you know, the, with, the, with the way the internet yeah. and, the, and, the, and the, the access to information we have, <sighs> It's starting to paint another picture. Maniacs, the demon-possessed maniacs running the West are determined to dominate the world, even if it means the destruction of the planet, the death of one to two billion people. They don't care. 
Earlier this week, we saw Maui County filing a lawsuit against Hawaiian Electric. Now we see Hawaiian Electric blaming Maui County officials for their inadequate response and even said there was no electricity flowing through the wires in that area. That's right. Hawaiian Electric said it had de-energized all of its power lines in Maui hours before the devastating wildfires broke out. People understand, Hawaii Electric, Hawaii Power announced today that they cut power to the lines six hours. Their stock is on a freaking tear. The reason the stock was on a tear is that they think the liabilities are going away. They cut the power in Maui six hours before the fire. This Maui thing, I'm telling you, there's something not right. There's something not right for, for three weeks. And here's the thing. They knew and authorities knew they cut to power three weeks ago. So why are we just hearing it today? So once again, the government is lying about the power lines being the cause of the fire. The electric company said its power lines were turned off six hours before the deadly blaze began. We now need to take a look at who's behind Hawaiian Electric. Taking a look at the top shareholders, and once again, we see Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street. What are the odds that BlackRock is not only behind the electric company, but is also behind the second largest holder of land on Maui and behind the largest land grab in history that is currently taking place. Oh, and also, what are the odds that BlackRock owned banks on Maui? They were all miraculously spared from the fires. So BlackRock failed to update the power lines and trim back trees, even though there is a specific page dedicated entirely to tree trimming safety on Hawaiian Electric's very own website. Brian Deese, a former BlackRock investment executive, serves on the National Economic Council. The former chief of staff to BlackRock's chief executive is also a top official at the Treasury Department. Previously sitting as the global chief investment strategist at BlackRock, Michael Pyle is now the chief economic advisor to Vice President Kamala Harris. All three also worked with the Obama administration. Former BlackRock executive Eric Van Nostrand joined the U.S. Treasury Department as well. In the past, we've seen the CEO of BlackRock, Larry Fink, say this. It's just, it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. For the first time in history, there's been an emergency proclamation by a governor even before there's an actual emergency. Green has declared a housing emergency. The proclamation is designed to push through Hawaii's regulatory red tape, but some groups are alarmed. Governor Green says it's time to get aggressive on housing. We're waiving some of the restrictions on um, the amount of land that, you know, that historically was, you know, allowable for building because we just want to get going. The working group would not be subject to sunshine laws. You know, I'm just like just very disappointed and really alarmed. For the first time in history, I believe there has been an emergency proclamation by a governor before there's an emergency. Josh Green on July 17th, three weeks before the fire, issued an emergency proclamation which gave blanket powers to people to go in and work on getting development projects for you guessed it, his state. But this is a very, very dangerous precedent. Also, it begs to question what is going on? Why would someone do that? Why would this guy do that? What is the purpose of that? Start waking up. You're gonna find out that there are some various, very, very nefarious things going on that are alarming. And they are worse, by the way, than Larry Ellison, the owner of Lanai. They're worse than the billionaires like Oprah and Bill Gates. They're actually worse than that. They're deeper than that. But it's time to wake up and understand that there's some really strange things going on that don't add up. And this is scary for America. And it's a wake up for the entire nation. Maui Police Chief John Pelletier has resurfaced just long enough to compare the loss of Lahaina to losing a leg. Yeah, Maui's police chief John Pelletier compares the loss of Lahaina to losing a leg. He says you can put a prosthetic on, you can learn to walk again, you can even learn how to run again, and you can have an incredible life, but it will never be the same. The men and women of this department, the men and women of the fire department, they swore oaths to save lives, and that's what they did. The problem is, is our community lost so many and when it's man versus nature, nature has always won. What do you want to tell your men and women who might be watching this? Oh, there's not enough thanks. No, I love them. So 
sounds like you're kind of. I love them. Emotional. Oh. It's going to your mind. That's my well. It's my it's my job. It's my job to protect them and care for them appreciate them, make sure nobody messes with them. Remember, this is the same guy who said this. Every data point is going to be scrubbed and looked at and, and... Every data point is going to be scrubbed. Direct quote. I mean, these people are literally telling on themselves. Again, just listen to what Hawaiian Governor Josh Green said. Within six hours, six hours, six hours. That's going to do it for today's video. If you feel I earned it, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Share your thoughts with all of us by leaving a comment in the section below. As always, I truly appreciate you taking the time to watch today's video and I hope to catch you on the next one. Take care.